Hello everyone. This is my 12th video on motor system examination. In first 11 videos, I have already covered the bulk, posture, tone, power, deep tendon reflex and superficial reflexes. Today I am going to tell you the details of gait. Whenever we are observing the gait and station of the patient, we are basically looking at the CNS. So gait and station both are the mirror of CNS. So we have to observe each and every patient, how the patient is walking, how the patient is standing from the sitting and the lying down position. Gait is the way patient walks and station is the way patient stands and maintain the posture. For the normal gait and the station, there should be normal motor function, proprioceptive sensation, brain stem function, cerebellar basal ganglia function and tonic neck and labyrinthine reflex, vestibular function and normal skeletal system will be required to maintain the normal gait and station. Now for the assessment of gait and station, we will tell the child to stand from the lying down or sitting position. Then we will observe is the child is able to stand erect, head up, chest out, abdomen in and the fit together and there should be no unsteadiness. Then we will tell the child to stand with the eyes closed. If the child is not able to maintain the balance with the eyes closed, that means Romberg sign is positive. Details of the Romberg sign I have already explained with the 8th cranial nerve examination. Now we have to observe the gait cycle and also reciprocal arm swing with the walk is there or not. Then we will measure the base width. It is the distance between both medial malleoli. It is normally approximately 2 inches. If it is less than or more than this, that means it is abnormal. If it is more than 2 inches, we label as a wide base gait. Then we will tell the child to walk with the eyes open, then with the eyes closed. And after that, in more than 9 years age group children, we will tell the child to perform the tandem walk. So in this video, you can see how to perform the tandem walk. So the age of this child is 11 years. So child is performing the tandem walk by keeping the heel of the foot in front of the toes of the another foot. If the child is able to perform, that means child is having the normal gait. In cerebellar ataxia, child will not be able to perform this walk. Then we will tell the child to perform the toes and heel walk. It is again possible after the age of 5 years. So in this video you can see child has performed the toe walk, now performing the heel walk. Then we will tell the child to walk briskly and again suddenly we will tell the child to stop it and turn to the right side, left side and backward. So by this way we have to observe the gait and the station of the child. Now I am going to show you some of the abnormal gaits and the characteristic of all these abnormal gaits in next few slides. So first abnormal gait is the spastic or the seizuring gait. In this child is having the seizuring of legs. That's why known as seizuring gait. Wooden shoulder. It is seen in the congenital spastic diaplegia, diaplegic CP child, chronic myelopathy and cervical spondylosis. So in this video you can see the child is having the slow walking with support, bilateral hip and the knee joint are adducted and partially flexed, child is dragging the feet because of the stiff leg and also walking on the toes because of the equinous position of the feet and heel core shortening. So this is the characteristic of seizuring gait seen in the commonly diaplegic CP child. Another characteristic abnormal gait is the circumduction gait. It is known as circumduction because child lift the leg in the form of circle or arc. It is seen in the spastic hemiparesis. And in this image you can see child is keeping the upper limb close to the body. Flex and adducted shoulder, wrist, elbow joints are there. And the affected lower limb is stiff and in extended position. So in this video you can see the child is having circumduction gait. And when child will lift the affected limb, hip will be higher than the normal side and child is dragging the foot. And the circumduction is there, lifting the leg in the form of arc or circle. So this is characteristic of circumduction gait. 
seen in spastic hemiparesis. Another abnormal gait is the high stepping or steepage or equine gait because child will raise the foot higher than the normal foot. That's why it is known as high stepping gait. It is seen in the foot drop and in sensory ataxia. In this video, you can see the child is having the right sided unilateral foot drop and to raise the foot from the floor, child is flexing the hip and the knee joint in the exaggerated manner to lift the foot from the floor and there will be a double tape sound it is because toes strike the ground first then the heel and in normal walk heel strike first high stepping gait can be seen in the unilateral foot drop due to the peripheral neuropathy, peroneal nerve palsy, L5 radiculopathy or poliomyelitis. Sometimes child is having the bilateral foot drop because of the muscular dystrophy, bilateral foot dorsiflexor weakness, charcot Marie tooth disease, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Even in the sensory ataxia, child will have the high stepping gait. But in sensory ataxia, there will be heel strike first then the toes. Another abnormal gait is the ataxic or broad based gait also known as staggering or reeling gait. In this child walk like a drunkard man that's why known as drunken sailor. So in this video you can see the child is having the ataxia. So child is walking in broad base placing the feet wide apart and child is having the clumsy, unsteady, swaying or lurching or uncoordinated gait. Child cannot walk in the straight line. And when you will tell the child to perform the tandem walk or walk in a straight line, child will have the uh, unsteady gait and child can even fall on the affected side or child will lose the balance. It is seen in the cerebellar dysfunction, posterior column disease and the vestibular disease. Another abnormal gait is the spastic ataxic gait. In this child will have the both the component of the spasticity and the ataxia. It is also known as jiggling or bobbing gait. In this video you can see the child is having the spastic ataxic gait. And there will be the uh, up and down body movements also associated with this. And child will have the tremulous bouncing movements. And when both corticospinal tract and the posterior column are involved, then this type of gait is seen in the vitamin B12 deficiency or in multiple sclerosis or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Another abnormal gait is the weddling or the myopathy gait. It is seen in the proximal myopathies, muscular dystrophy, whenever there is a hip girdle muscle weakness. So if the child is having unilateral muscle weakness, child will have the Trendelberg sign due to the hip abductor weakness. In this abnormal drop of the pelvis on the affected side occur. We label as a weddling gait whenever there is a bilateral hip girdle muscle weakness as there will be exaggerated pelvic swing and child will have the exaggerated hip motion or the rotation of the pelvis. Also hyperlordotic posture will be there and child will walk with the broad base known as weddling or the myopathic gait. Child will also have the difficulty in climbing stairs because of the proximal muscle weakness. Also child will have the gover sign. So in this video you can see child is standing from the sitting position and the gover sign is there. Child is taking the help of the hand to stands. It is characteristically seen in the DMD. Also child will have the toe walking. So in this video you can see the child is walking on the toes because of the proximal muscle weakness. It is again seen in the proximal myopathies. Hyperkinetic gait seen whenever child is having abnormal limbs movement, either chorea, athetosis or the dystonia. So in this video you can see the child is having choric movement in the limbs and also having the abnormal body movements. 
This child was suffering from syndendum chorea and having the hyperkinetic gait. Also can be seen in the Huntington disease or any other disease in which child is having abnormal limbs movement. Some other gates are antalgic gait whenever child is having pain or the fracture in the lower limbs. Hypokinetic gait is seen in the adult, those who are suffering from Parkinsonism, in which gait will be slow, stiff, shuffling and walk with small steps. And decreased arm swing will be there. Also having the rigidity, bradykinesia, loss of associated movement. We label the tentative gait whenever child is having the weakness or hypotonia of the lower extremity. So this is all about the gait and the station. Thank you so much.